Okay, so now we're ready to actually start getting the cross slide and everything together. So I have all my parts relatively laid out and all my tools over here. So first things first, you want to take our nut, which um, I'm going to eventually be replacing this nut and actually replacing the uh, rod here, the threaded section of this, and also making a new handle to accommodate some uh, large dials. but. I actually want to get this machine set up, start making some cuts, get this all leveled out to where we need it, and uh, you know, see how it performs first. So first things first, we're going to take our nut, and we're going to take our retaining screw for the nut, which is this big one right here. Now, there's a set screw that goes in the middle. You can see that this is hollow, and that is to allow you to oil right into the nut. So. There's already oil on these ways here. I'm going to take this nut and slide it in the back here. Slide this all the way out. Put that nut where it goes. I'm going to take the retaining screw. And take a screwdriver that's big enough to span that slot. And we're not going to tighten it down. This is just in there hand tight. Okay, so that nut can still wiggle left and right. Now we want to take our gib here, which is already oiled. We're going to slide that in place. And we're going to take our gib screw with some never seeds on it. And we're going to get that into place. Okay, so now with nothing on this, we're going to slide this back and forth, and we're going to feel our resistance, and we're going to adjust our gib accordingly. We want, we want to feel a little bit of resistance, but we still want to be able to slide this nice and easy back and forth. And we can adjust it again once we get everything on, but right now it's just an, a little initial adjustment. Just a little bit more oil on here. And I'm going to make sure that there's no side to side play. A little bit, another turn. All right, obviously there's less wear over here. I bind up a little bit right there because that's on the side of travel where we never end up being. That's actually off the screw. So right now, loosen that up just a hair. All right, that feels good right there. So now, I didn't bother polishing this piece up yet because uh, we're gonna end up making a new one. What I wanna do is put our feed screw in. Now some lathes have bearings and stuff on here and I'm going to be adding one when we replace the screw. But for right now, this does not have one. Okay, push that back until we can feel it engage the gear in here. And then I'm going to put This housing on here, and of course, no matter how hard you try, you end up looking like the Tin Man after you play with Never Seas. Okay, tighten that down. Grab a wrench. Next up goes our dial, 
And then goes our ball crank. So I polish these up a little bit. And right, they're by no means, you know, chrome trellis hitch polish, but they're a hell of a lot better than it was. Now on this screw, there's a little slot right here, and it takes a little round pin, and that's what acts as a key and locks this together. So that goes on there like so. <laughs> Sometimes things don't cooperate. I'm going to get a pair of needle nose and get that in place. Okay, so I got that in there. just took me a second there. Now, this is the, uh, the nut that was on here when I got this lathe. It's not the correct nut. So, um, I'll be either making a new one or finding one. But we can just install this temporarily here. Okay. Now... We can tighten down this screw. And that locks that nut in place. So that little amount of wiggle room allows the nut to be nice and straight. So now what I want to do is there are two pins in here behind these set screws. And that's what holds the dovetail for the compound in place and we want to make sure that they're in the correct direction and make sure they're nice and loose because that's what's going in next. Alright, so here's the base of the compound. What we need to do first is we need to put a little bit of oil on here and on the slide And we need to just pop this slide into place. Okay, now flip it upside down. Get the nut. Drop it in. And there's a screw that holds it down. Now same idea as the other one. We just need to get it in place first. Get it lined up. That nut in there. And we want it nice and loose. Okay, we don't have to get at the bottom of this anymore. What I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil on, on the base here and on this dovetail. And we'll get this 
this in place. Now this was tight coming out, just need, probably needs a little bit of a tap. And there it is. We're right in place. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take our give that we repaired which is right here add a little bit of oil to it and we're just going to slide her in place I'm going to take our new screw Seize on the end. Try not to look like the Tin Man again. And same deal here. So that's too tight. Back it off. Okay, that it's got some drag on it. I feel pretty good for now. Now I'm going to take our nut and our base, and this is a large dial uh, that one of my viewers had given me. So actually, add a little bit of oil to this, Get some lighter oil on this. A little bit of oil on that shaft there. Okay. I'm going to screw this in. I wonder if the zero lines up. It might not because it's a different machine that this came off of and it doesn't seem to. So we're going to have to make a zero mark on this. And uh, there's a pin spanner on the side here. But we're just going to do it hand tight for now. This is the dial. I haven't cleaned this up yet. I have an idea to kind of mimic the satin chrome finish on that. We're going to try it out. So that goes on. And then the dial, I'm sorry, the, uh, the hand wheel. Pin was already in there still, and we're gonna take our nut and we're gonna install the nut. What I usually do is just start it with a screwdriver. And now I'm gonna get I have a um, it's just a, a spanner, like a fork, and I'm going to tighten that all the way down, and then uh, we'll be right back.
Okay, so I have everything together. Uh, it just took a little gentle persuasion to get this handle on there. I know when I go to edit the video, it's probably going to look like I'm really pounding on it, but I'm, trust me, I'm not. I have about 15,000 um, backlash in the compound here, which really, in all honesty, isn't that much. Now, backlash in the lathe really isn't that big of a deal because most of your feed is going to be in one direction. You're not you're very rarely coming back, and if you are coming back, you just have to kind of go beyond it. You're not doing anything like coordinates or anything on the mill where it's a little bit more finicky. Even still, I have a lot of backlash in the compound screw, which uh, or cross slide screw rather, which we were we already knew. So, I mean, I got a decent amount there, and let me just tilt you in a little bit. You. There's no real backlash adjustment on these lathes, but what you can kind of do is you can see when I wind it different directions, the screw kind of unscrews itself a little bit there. You can actually get a washer and put it in here and take out uh, some of the backlash that way and just take up that slack. And that kind of gives you a little bit of a backlash, not really a true backlash adjustment, but it, it can help you out a lot. But everything in here is nice and it moves. The only other thing I need to put on is just the other little extension cover, which cut, which bolts right to the end of the cross side here and just covers the screw. Uh, I just got to get the screws for that. The ones that came out of there were kind of were uh, damaged. Okay, so why don't we start this up here? Now the outboard gears are going to be a bit noisy just because they're straight cut gears. They don't really have any lube on them right now, and the panel isn't on there yet. So once I get that panel in place that'll deaden it a little bit. Um, the gear mesh for the tumbler reverse ones aren't really adjustable so you're dealing with uh, wear there and um, I also have one one of the shafts is a little bit a little bit loose, it's a little bit worn so that that's gonna be uh, one of the projects I'm gonna do but we're just gonna run it and see what we got for feeds here. So everything is working. Okay, so it moves. <laughs> it's alive and uh, doing what a lathe is supposed to do. Well, it's not cutting anything yet, but that's next. So um, there is still some work to do on this. I do need to get my ass in gear and strip and paint the covers. And I also need to remake the uh, shaft for the sliding gear. I want to remake the crossfeed screw and nut. I have to make a back plate for the four jaw chuck that's going to live on this. Uh, this lathe originally came with a uh, Aloris AXA tool post. We're going to be getting rid of that. And I have an Aloris BXA tool post. So I have to machine the T nut for this. And also, um, I want to remake the screw for the tailstock, which lux luckily is the same pitch as the cross, cross feed screw and that's what this is here so we're going to be remaking that and doing some modifications to the barrel to replace the threads in there um, next few videos are probably going to be getting this all dialed in and leveled i need to also either make or buy some leveling feet uh, so we definitely have some good machining content coming up but as far as uh, assembly videos we're pretty much done with those we're not necessarily ready to let this thing walk down the runway but um it's all together. So in addition to that, I'm going to try to be getting these videos out once per week. Uh, YouTube has kind of been really sticking it to me with um, not doing that. In addition to the huge shakeup with um, advertisers that you guys probably have heard about, I'm also not nearly getting uh, as many subscribers per month as I used to, probably because I'm not uploading 
nearly as much as I was. So I'm going to try to get into the habit of doing it per week again. It was just hard with work and everything through the summer, but um, now that I'm going to, we're going to start going into the fall within the next couple of months, uh, I should have a lot more time on the weekends. I'm still running around like crazy during the week, but the weekend should be a hell of a lot slower. So I'm going to try to get into getting out one video per week. These things just take a lot of time and effort to do. Uh, you'd be surprised. So uh, I'm also looking into Patreon. Uh, so any of you guys out there that use Patreon for other channels, that subscribe to other channels through Patreon, um, throw some comments and everything down there and let me know what you think of it. And uh, I'm looking into that as an avenue also. Um, obviously, I'm not looking to get rich or anything. Any money that comes into this channel goes right into the shop to what you see here. Uh, your, any, any support that you guys see, whether it be views, or eventually Patreon, if I get that set up, goes right into making content for uh, this channel. Um, you know, it's, it's not much, but every little bit helps because it takes a lot of time, effort, and money to get these videos out. I mean, I'm not going to lie. So, um, we're going to be looking into that avenue. In the meantime, hope you guys like this video. Uh, click the like button. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and tell your friends about the channel and see if they might want to subscribe too. So in the meantime, uh, keep doing what you guys are doing and we'll see you later.